For today's quiz, we have two balls. One ball will be in motion, going fast, and we throw that one down. We have a starting line. As that ball comes next to another ball, we simply let it go. So this one is already in motion. This one was not. We're gonna start the race right here. Question is, which of the balls, the one that is at rest or the one that is already moving, will hit the ground first and which will hit the ground with a greater velocity? That's your quiz for today. To answer this question, let's think of a ball when it drops. When it drops, it picks up more and more speed. If we used flash photography, we know that the ball would end up getting further and further apart as it falls. Let me draw that out. Let's say the ball is up here at first, and then a second later, it's gonna be down here a little bit. It's picking up speed, and then the spacing between these is gonna get a little bit further and further apart. Not doing this to scale, but I think we can get the idea. And then it would finally be down here and be much further down because it's accelerating. So that's a ball that we're dropping. Let's have this as a starting line up top here. This will be our start. And let's say that's at time equals zero seconds. Well, if another ball is actually being thrown down to begin with, it's got a velocity by the time it hits this line. I'll put it right next to it. So here's our ball that's already in motion. Give it a few swish symbols showing that it's already in motion. Maybe we could pick some velocity here and maybe it's already been falling for a second, which means it'll be going the same exact speed as this one, which we know after a second, time equals one second, this velocity would be negative 9.8 meters per second, down in that direction. Hence the reason why we say objects fall at 9.8 meters per second every second. This one we could say is already at 9.8 meters per second in a downward direction, negative. That means in another second, it's gonna end up going twice that, which is gonna be 19.6. We also know that the distance that this one falls in the next second will be this distance. That'll equal the distance that this one is now falling. So I can draw that one out right here. So it's already got this much greater distance. And then this one would end up falling about right here. So this would be at one second here. This would be at about the one second mark for these two. And this would be the two second mark. So I could say time equals two seconds. You can see that the ball that was already in motion will always have a greater velocity. And I can say this one is gonna be a velocity negative 19.6 meters per second down. It'll always be going faster and it'll always be in front of the other one for any given second. So if I had my um, finish line right here, you could see this one would be getting there first and it would also be going faster. That's your quiz for today. And if you stick around, we'll go into a slightly deeper dive. All right, we've already put some numbers and we approximated them. Instead of using 9.8, we just decided to use 10 meters per second just to make things a little bit easier. Just like the problem that we did before, we have a few more of these um, uh, flash photography spots uh, located on this inscription. But here you can see that we actually have our values of zero meters per second, 10 meters per second, 20, 30, 40. Every second we gain roughly 10 meters per second. On this particular case, we are starting with that 10 going down and it's gonna end up picking up its speed every second by about another 10, 20, 30, 40. We also know through Galileo's law that uh, the distances that increase, so that is the change in distance, increases by whatever the original distance was multiplied by the odds. So 5 times 3 would be 15, 
5 times 5 would be 25, and so on. So you can end up getting much more detail in an inscription like this. What we can also say is that we can relate our equations. If we had our standard equation of, I'll put it right here, df equals di plus our a and t. This one has an a and t. This one also adds that initial velocity initial. So that can hopefully help you think about how equations can come together with our inscriptions. That is how we raw, write and draw things out to help us understand things that we might not have been able to explain in greater detail. Well, many students had this intuition that uh, both of the objects would end up hitting the finish line at the same time. When we draw it out, they re recognize right away, no, the ball that's in motion is clearly going to get there first, and it's going to have a greater velocity. All right, that's your quick list.